In this video, I will show you how to edit like Daniel Dahlen and his POV videos are going viral. I think it's so cool. His content is super dope too. And I'm gonna teach you how to get a similar style using Premiere Pro. I'm giving away some really cool film borders that you can use in the pro community. So if you want to become a pro editor or work with one of the best editors in the world, then do join the Social Creator Club Pro. Link is in the description. And then let's jump into it. So I'm here in Spotify. That's actually where we start because editing a vlog without having some songs in mind is gonna be really difficult. And this is my own playlist and this is also really important. If you copy his music, if you copy his editing style, if you copy everything, you won't get the same results because you're not Daniel Dalen. So choose the music that fits you, fits the vibe of the video or fits the client. That will also give some personality to the video and the same goes with these effects that I'm gonna explain. I think the best way to master these effects is to copy it at first, but when you're implementing it in your your own videos or in clients projects you need to make it your own choose different fonts choose different colors try out different text effects use different songs I think you get the point. Now we're going to Premiere Pro and you can do this in any editing program, but basically now we drag all the footage into our project, including the sounds that you may have downloaded. And I'm just gonna go to new item sequence. I'm gonna use a 4K 25 frames per second and the sequence name, Daniel Dalen. Hit okay. And I'm gonna import the song that I'm gonna use. And you can of course use copyrighted or copyright free music. And Daniel is known for his cool intro sequences and we're gonna try to recreate that. So I'm gonna make this a bit bigger and as you can see in this song there's a couple of beats here. And basically with this waveform you can see these dots. We can use that to edit on the beat. Now what I always like to do is basically go to the song and then here's the beat and if I'm on a tight deadline I would just drag the footage in and just cut it on the beat. If you have a bit more time you can also select the footage, press M for marker and basically set markers where you want the cut to happen and it's always good to do this on the beat maybe sometimes maybe sometimes on a hi-hat ideally you want to switch it around a bit so it's not too basic there we go that's really cool now i'm gonna cut it off i have a shortcut for this if you don't you can also go to the cut tool or the razor tool add a cut here then select this delete this and move this over. Now I also have some footage here from my week in the life. Basically how I always like to edit is to just double click on my footage, set a in point and out point, and then just dragging the video only in. Now I'm just gonna have to dive as the first shot. Bloop, there we go. And now what you can do is a couple of things. So you can use the same shot to edit on the beat. If you don't have much B-roll, this is a really good method to still add something to your video, right? So for example, I can drag this clip out a bit. There we go. And basically just go a bit further, basically where I'm swimming here, let's add a cut. And I'm just gonna delete this and move this over. And again, having shortcuts make this way quicker. Uh, for example, I just do Q, D, W, and there we go. Then we can do that a couple times, just make sure that there's enough time between it. So again, if you don't have shortcuts, you just go to the razor tool, add a cut here, add a cut here where we have our marker and delete this middle part. And again, make sure what you cut away is basically big enough so you see the change happening. So if you play it, you literally see like there's a gap between it. Otherwise you don't really notice the cut and ideally you have a lot of time between it. The more time actually the better because then again, you really can see the difference between the shots. Now this shot is actually really long because I also went for a swim. Let's see. So you could also like have this part. Let's go a bit further here. There we go. And this is just rinse and repeat. And if we play it now, we should have a couple of beats. There we go. So this is already a really cool effect to basically add some motion to your video. But let's say you have another clip like this. Of course, you can also drag that in. Let's move this below. There we go. So now you have this, so now this, and it's a bit more dynamic, right? Let's move this over. There we go. That's nice. So this is just some basic editing on the beat, but really adds to the style. Now, as you might've noticed, this footage is really gray, and that's because this is shot in log. Just in short, the log is a color profile, which basically contains as much color information as possible. So you can still color grade it after recording it. This will just give you more flexibility in the edit. And I know for a fact that Daniel Dahlen is using this. If you have a camera that can't shoot log or your client doesn't provide you log footage, that's also totally fine. 
To give you an example of this, we can go to Window Workspaces and Color, and then I can go to Lumetri Color here. And normally with Lock, you can just add a lot to it. You can also convert it to Rec 709. And to quickly show you what that means, for example, if you choose this standard Alexa Lock to Rec 709, this will convert it to normal Rec 709 footage. And this is something you might be familiar with. Basically, most cameras, they record in Rec 709. And then we can, of course, go to the creative tab. We can increase the vibrance a bit, maybe increase a bit of faded film, can change the shadow tint and the highlight tint to a orange and teal look. And if we now turn off the creative and turn it off and on, you can see that's already adding like a certain vibe to it. This is just some really basic color grading. A lot more goes into this, of course, but if you're working with tight deadlines, then it's also good to just use a LUT. And there's some built-in LUTs, which are basically standard filters, which you can experiment with. But you can, of course, also find these on YouTube. If you're happy with your look, that's great, because now we're gonna add the film border. Let's go to Window Workspaces and go back to the Editing Workspace. And actually got this really cool film border. I'm gonna drag that in. And this one is widescreen, so it's filling the whole screen. Again, I will create a couple and give this away to the pro community. But if you can't afford to join, you can also find these on YouTube. Now we're just gonna go to effect controls while selecting this. And then we're gonna go to the opacity blending mode. And for this one, we can use two modes or darken, which works really well as you can see, or we can also change this to multiply. And multiply will also darken the footage a bit, but it will also add some grain in the borders. Now we can just move this over our footage and this film border is actually 15 seconds. And if you need more, you can literally just duplicate this by hitting Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows and just pasting it a couple times. Command V on Mac and Control V on Windows. Just do that a couple times and as you can see, it will just fill the layers and you can of course lock it and not touch it. In this case, I actually only want it on the beginning. So let's just delete this and let's just make sure that this is just for the beginning. There we go. Let's go back to the start. Now, this film frame already includes some grain, as you can see in the left top, but ideally you also want some film grain. So let's drag this to the top, make sure that there's some room between this. And then I'm gonna import this coarse film grain. Let's just drag that in. Also, let's cut this off. Then I'm gonna go to effect controls and set this to 200 so it fills the screen. And we change the blend mode to overlay and it will be really subtle, but let's say we turn the film border off and I'm just gonna zoom in. If I'm gonna now turn this off and on, you will see the difference. And it adds this really cool effect to the footage. Let's add this back on and we already have a really cool style. Now, the only thing I'm gonna do is add some text. And to do this, the easiest way is to just go to the type tool and then we can just click anywhere on the screen, day in the life, day in the life. Then I'm gonna select the text and then you have the properties panel here on the right. I'm gonna center it and I'm gonna use the font Anton. And this font looks really similar, uh, but again, choose something that you like or that the client likes. Generally these tall fonts, I think that always looks really good anyway. It's like really cinematic. So you could still go for a tall font, for example. But again, try to add something to it to make it your own. You could, for example, also animate this in in a different way or mix and match. Maybe you find a style of someone else and you can just implement that too. While we have the text selected, I'm also gonna change the color and Daniel always uses like a yellowish color, something like that. Now, once you select the text here in the properties panel, let's go down and we have the align panel and we can also make sure that it's centered. I'm gonna increase the font size a bit. So it's a bit bigger. We need to probably center it again. Yeah, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the effects panel. I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur to this. So you just drag this up, drag this on the text, and then you'll see it here on the left and maybe set the blurriness to three. Let's zoom in a bit. And as you can see, it will make it a bit more soft, basically making it a bit less digital, I would say. It's a small, subtle effect. Now you can cut this off. And since we place these markers and we already cut our footage on the beat, we can literally now just hold Alt, drag this over. So we duplicated this, go to the next shot and 
change the text here. Just double click on it of an editor. So basically it will change on the beat. And then you get something like this. Do let me know what you want to see next in the comments down below. Of course, don't forget to join the pro community where you learn how to become a pro editor with in-depth deep dives, a sales masterclass, tons of potential clients that you can apply on and a community full of great editors that are there to help. Then like always, thanks for all the support. Thanks for watching. And then I'll see you next time. Bye.